Hello to any combo lord seeing me in this strange multiplicitous realm hanging out in my room right now doing another stream and I put some of my soundtrack beats I made in the background instead of the fan because I thought that'd be a slightly more chill landscape now let me make sure I got my head in the corner correctly yep what we were going to take a peek at today was I wanted to make some tier lists of numbers now really just the one digit numbers because that's going to give us plenty to talk about but there's some other fun stuff on this site we might find some other mathematical things we can sort it's a fun ranking system that's sometimes used is to have grade like letters and then this one called s tier that's even better i think it emerged from some video game thing not sure where the origin of S came from up there, but we're rolling with it. A lot of these, if we see other variations, this is just one I found on the website. We may see S on top as opposed to the other letters. Um, and this one, they go S, then A+, plus, then A, then B, then C, and no D or lower. Which is kind of good, because I would have a hard time giving any number that low of a score. Um, of course, if we were comparing these numbers to all numbers, these are all S-tier numbers on the big scale. Because you can always find a number with like more boring, less interesting properties than these. Like, all of these are going to have a lot more tricks up their sleeve than some random 20-digit number. Um... And let me figure out if I can get the live chat and still have my soundtracks in the background. Not sure. Maybe I'll just have to peek back and forth. Um, and uh, they don't have a D tier or F tier here. And we're still just going to have to be comparing them to each other. Because otherwise they're all S tier, top of the class numbers. But... Um, I'm going to have to pause looking at the chat for a minute just so I can put some soundtrack beats in the background and focus on my tier list. Um, but I will come back to it when needed. Um, so, um, we're going to try and rank them comparatively so that we're saying for a one digit number in our system trying to get them somewhat evenly spread. It's going to be hard, but I don't want to just say they're all S tier um, because that's boring. We need to try and rank them comparatively to each other. And the thing here is we have to take into consideration whether we're using base 10 world bias or not. Like do numbers with cultural significance matter? Uh, that would come more into play with two-digit and three-digit numbers, but still here, it's a question. And then, like, do does traits a number have, because of our counting system, give it pluses? For example, the number nine is one of the main ones I'm wondering about how its rating is going to go, because nine has a lot of really cool tricks it can do with divisibility. Like, if you take any two numbers composed of the same digits but scrambled... Uh, and their difference is a multiple of nine. And any multiple of nine has its digits summed to a multiple of nine. And all of these uh, interesting little phenomena nine can do. And so those are really just traits that the number B minus one in a given base has. And we count in base 10, so nine got those traits. So I'm going to give a little bit of the cultural spin into it. I'm mostly going to be ranking the numbers based on just their fundamental, that amount of a thing, how fundamentally cool that is, uh, how notable or unique or uh, useful the number might be. But um, I will give a slight edge if I'm not sure where to put one to a trait it inherits from society. Uh, like nine's going to get a slight plus by being the B minus one with those weird divisibility quirks in our base. Um, now, zero... Zero is obviously an S tier number. Zero is the king of numbers. I almost want to only put zero in S tier because it kind of needs a tier of its own. It's better than the rest. It's 
so powerful, so cool, so mysterious. There are ways in which it's similar to one because they're both identity elements, but that's a, a additive identity and that's a multiplicative identity. There are ways it's similar to infinity in that you approach it uh, on some functions that are the inverse of some functions that approach infinity. And it, it's just this like midpoint on not only the positive and negative numbers, but this midpoint on the complex plane, the midpoint of like quaternions or most ways of visualizing things. And it's it just this absorbing, powerful, epic, infinite one. To me, the most powerful numbers are like zero, one, and the idea of infinity, which can isn't a number of itself, but can be spun a few ways that are number-like. So one is where it gets hard. Do I call one A plus or S? Now, just to get them balanced enough, I'm going to let one be S tier. One is the unit. And part of why I'm letting one be S tier, like normally I might be like, okay, one's really cool. It's the unit. You can build all the other numbers with it. Super crucial, uh, multiplicative identity, all that stuff. But I might have called it A plus until uh, I thought more about the episode that I just dropped on the main channel really recently. The latest main channel episode is about the roots of number one, how like the cube roots of one are these surprisingly interesting coordinates. Um, coordinates because they're partially real, partially imaginary and stuff. Um, and a lot of cool traits of other roots of one that have this clock-like mechanism that lives inside one. So although zero is the epic absorbing element, zero has a hard time having a clock live inside it. One has a fine time having a clock live inside it. So those are going to be my S tiers of the batch. Now, I'm going to check the comments real quick. So ever, anyone else, say if you have any suggestions you think... I'm actually going in order, but it just happened that the first two were the S tiers. Um, but if anyone thinks that I missed any S tiers that you would put in S tier, I want to hear your justification for why. And I'm going to pause my beat for a second to look at the comments. Um, and not being a tech whiz, that will always take me a minute. Um, so... Someone a lot of people are saying uh, various comments. We got four is boring, one is S, two is A plus. These are the comments people are saying about numbers. I love all the comments, but I'm only saying the ones like related to this topic. But feel free to leave whatever comments. I love you all. But um, although I love you all and love all the comments, I'm on a mission right now. Um, so we got two. Uh, someone said one is should be S tier, two breaks prime odd stuff, duh, duh, duh. identity two is irritating, duh, duh, duh. Um, a lot of people are saying two is probably A tier or the second tier. Now, I am going to give two comparatively on this list, and we'll go back to throwing some beats on. I am going to go uh, A plus tier for two, because two has a lot of cool traits. So one is a number of its own, but although it's a multiplicative identity, that means it can't grow on its own under multiplication. Two expands in ways that one doesn't. Um, the square root of two is also a cool number. Um, two is good for bases, like binary is the minimal functional base of a certain form of base. Um, two has good things with its powers, like the sums of all the powers of two up to a given point are always one less than the next power of two. Um, so two has some fun properties and it's just like the time where stuff starts growing. Now, a lot of people think two has those things and three doesn't, but sometimes two stalls out and needs three to do the actually interesting stuff. Sometimes two is a little too normal. Three is also an A-plus number. Three even needs to be in the dictionary. Threes are all over nature, math, and existence. Also, these two numbers, when someone said two is the only even prime, 
Three is the only three even prime. So the more notable trait is that these are the only neighboring primes. And so as the only neighboring primes, they kind of got to hang out in this A plus tier together. Only time that two primes are neighbors. Now three has so many tricks up its sleeve. I'll probably write a whole book about three evens and throughouts. So three is A plus. Now here's where it gets debatable. Four is not an A plus number. Four could almost be considered a B number out of this list, but four has some traits that's going to give it an A. Here's the traits that give four an A. Four is the first non-trivial square number. So square numbers are super cool and interesting, and one is sort of trivial and zero sort of trivial as square numbers, so this is the first sort of non-trivial square number. Fours also sits at this interesting spot as two's friend. Two plus two is the same as two times two, is the same as two tetrated two, is any of that, two to the second power. When you get two twos in any level of operation, you get a four. And there's also some cool ones like two to the fourth is four to the second. Um, uh, I guess, let's see, I got to roll back some more of my beats better than a fan in the background because it'll be loud background stuff otherwise possibly and all these beats that you hear in my soundtracks anyway are beats i made and also beats that will show up in a musical project you'll hear from me someday before due to having all those fun things coming so early in the numbers and being the first non-trivial square gets an a now Five, this is really debatable. Five is, it's a low prime, but for these numbers, it's B tier, just because I'm trying to equally scatter them. If if we're talking about, you know, like if this was a list of the two digit numbers and I was equally scattering those, five would get a little higher. But if this is the class and I need to grade it equally and try and get a somewhat even amount in each tier, five has to be in B tier. It's where it's overrated because of the base 10 system and because of us having five fingers. It is a low prime. It's where stuff starts getting weird with stuff like the impossibility of the quintic um, and a lot of cool traits, uh, pentagons, golden ratio. But out of these numbers, it's got to be B tier. Sorry. Now, Oh, it's so close to A, though. I wish I could put it on the edge. Now, six. Here's where we get controversial. A plus. All right, I know that's a controversial, controversial maneuver. But six is there because two and three are there. Two times three being six tells us a lot. Because you could also attach a times one if you wanted. The fact that 2 and 3 multiply to 6 makes it a primorial, makes it a factorial with that one. The fact that these three add to 6 makes it a triangular number, also lends to its quality as a perfect number and its quality as a highly composite and superior highly composite number. In my opinion, the best base to count in. Um, and this should be... These should be our tools in our toolkit, one, two, and three, and zero. And this should be our first, like, big number. So, A tier, fight me. Now, here's where it gets really controversial. I know so many of you would have put seven above six. Now, six got A plus tier. And watch this. I am sorry. Seven is the worst one-digit number. Uh, once again, if we compare it to large numbers, we're going to have some really cool ones. I mean, it's cooler than the larger ones. Like, it's going to have a lot of cool traits compared to them. But we're not comparing to two or three-digit numbers. We're comparing to one-digit numbers, and seven is the worst of those. It has the least interesting traits. Now we'll see that... Six has so much going for it. I've ranted about six a lot, but what about this eight and nine? Well, first of all, they're the only perfect powers that are neighboring. 
So we're probably going to have to put them in a tier together because they're friends like two and six. They have this bond that's a special trait that's not that one of them has, it's that both of them has. They're the only perfect powers, apart from if you count those two, zero and one, meaning a number that can be expressed as like A to the B with those as integers uh, that are neighbors. So we're going to probably make them neighbors on the tier list because they're also kind of equally cool. We get the <laughs> the first non-trivial number cubed and then the next non-trivial number squared, kind of, if we're calling one trivial in some ways. Um, and But its trivialness earns it the spot because it, like, did everything already. It's the Seinfeld effect. You ever heard of that? It's like... Seinfeld doesn't seem innovative as much because it did a lot of things that other shows copied that now seem normal, that you're now used to. Well, that's the one effect also. One, one seems boring because it's so good at doing the job that you want numbers to do. It does it too plain and simple because it's the one who made the job. Um... So, these are the perfect powers that are neighbors. Super good, and if that's trivial, this is like... Here's what's cool, too. Two to the third power, three to the second power. So, they're really cool, and I don't know whether I should put them A or B. Are they more four-like or five-like? Now, hmm... Five... Okay, here's what we got to do. You know how I said I'm going to give a little bump for cultural bias or for the effect that they have in our system? I'm going to give 8 a B tier just in comparison to these. Being 2 cubed is a great trait. 8's a cool number. It's just in comparison to these. And 9 would be its neighbor except for the fact that in our base 10 system, nine has such cool divisibility tricks. I don't like our base 10 system, but in my life, nine gets more fun because I'm stuck in base 10 so I can do tricks with it. So in my world, nine gets bumped up right there. And this is our tier list of the one digit numbers right now. This is the grade negative one answer, of course, any answers you see me make on tier lists right now are just hypotheses. They're my grade negative one answer, and I could all they could be subject to change. Um, so leave your comments. I haven't checked the comments in a while about what you would have done different or which ones of these you don't think are right. But I'm sticking with this. Sue me. Don't. So, let's get our comments up. So, let's see. We got a lot of comments about other people's numbers they liked. And um, I'm glad some people agree that 7 got low and 6 got high. And yeah, when we... We can use base six. I actually wrote a cool way of writing base six numbers. That's a new way. So I'll show you guys. It's cursive like, so you can write numbers in a little loop. And it's all the combinations of these little loops. So sometime I'll show you guys my base six uh, writing system. Uh, and just like the way of writing the numerals. And then we won't get confused. So we'll know that like, if we want to say one zero, we'll know which system we're writing it in, if we, we mean six or if we mean 10. So I'm glad people agree with this. Now, when I went on this website, cause I do want to do some more random ones here cause it's fun just to do random ones. And let me just put some more beats back in the background. And uh, this will be a stream where I'm looking at the comments less frequently, but I will look at them all once in a while. So. Leave your suggestions of if there's a particular thing you want me to rank that you think they might have on this site. Um, we might also talk to that robot later, so you can also leave questions you have for that robot that's really bad at math. Um, 
So when I went on this site, there is not a category, unfortunately, for numbers. Uh, no category called numbers. No category called math. I'm so used to uh, you guys like understanding my math ranting and me tying numbers into everything that I forget that not everyone's on our same page. So when I first was scrolling the categories, I was like, wait, no, no, where's math? I, I, I just don't see math. It must, I must be missing it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, no, they just don't have a math category. Um, however, they do have other cool categories. Let's pull up any categories that might be useful, but then I also just searched numbers, but just ones that could theoretically be useful are, Let's see. I don't even know what some of these mean. Okay, let's see. Funny could be funny. History could be historical. Um, I like Lego. And uh, let's see. Nature is good. Maybe we'll do music another day. Some of these are so specific. They don't have math, but they have Thomas and friends. Um, oh, YouTube and streaming. Maybe they have a category for best combo class videos. No, I'm kidding. Um, so really though, I'm just pulling those up for later because this is when I search numbers, what you get. All right, real quick, we're gonna do one through 20. This is going to be really quick so this is not my final thoughts on the matter this is just me uh doing my approximation so if we count zero there are 21 numbers total meaning that this one has six tiers so we want each tier to get three or four about um all right so this is just my grade negative one rough cut answer this will be subject to change We've already done these, but now they're gonna get smushed higher to the top. Because you see, now that we get three or four about per category, if we're grading on trying to equalize them, uh, S tier is gonna get all of these. S tier is gonna get these ones. These S tiers gets these numbers. Sorry guys, these numbers are S tier. A tier, there's no A plus anymore. A tier is gonna get Four out of this list, remember, five, um, 12, and no, five goes down. We're just putting four and 12 there for now. That'll get five, eight, and nine. C so you'll get 10. Now, here's where it really matters if we put culture into perspective or not. I'm saying we're putting culture in a little bit because 11 has superpowers because of our base that make it cool. But that's like because of our base. So if we're talking about counting base... Okay, we're this one we're counting culture. They get bumped up for their cultural base 10 thingies. Um because they have cool tricks they do. 13 also gets bumped up by being uh, a number some consider unlucky that I consider lucky. Um, seven, you'll go down there with that. Um, 16, we'll go with those. So we'll 20, because that's, no, 20 will go down there. Um, 15 is gonna go um, probably D tier. Um, 18 is going to go C tier. Um, 14 will go F tier. Um, 17 will go 17 and 19 are primes. So they go D tier. Sorry, 14. It kind of got the low end of the stick this time. 
That's my temporary rough cut list of the first 20 numbers. Leave your complaints or thoughts in the comments. Um, so, what other number things do they have? They have, because those are just those, but like, what about the best numbers? Which ones are, are there, is it just, see, look, the best numbers. These are different types of numbers. Some of them are going to be jokes I don't understand, though. Um, so let's see. Yeah, let's do the best numbers. This looks fun. Nah, I don't, I don't know all of the references, but leave your thoughts on where you would put the best numbers. We'll do this tier list someday. We'll do this tier list in grade negative two when the time's right. Um, square numbers. That's interesting. They have just square numbers. All right, let's rank the square numbers compared to each other. One is S tier. If we get about two per tier, then four gets S tier also. Four gets to sneak up there. Nah, one gets, gets to hang out on its own. Four, nine, um, 16, 100, um, 144, all these are kind of cool. Now, I'm kind of basing them on what they're squared on, and then it might end up similar to the other list. So, yeah, we don't need to do all the square numbers. Numbers and letters. Ooh, this is going to get controversial if I rank the letters. We might have to do letters a different day. Letters will get real controversial real quick. All I need to say on my letters tier list real quick. Oh no, there's no F tier. This won't work for me. These are supposed to be an F tier. I know I put that in the name of my show, but it's just a bad letter for society to have in the English alphabet. These are the ones that aren't needed in the alphabet. Now, of course, if we're talking about other uses of them, X is one of the dopest. X does all kinds of stuff and it's hiding here. Got that invisible X. So, the first 25 prime numbers. That's interesting. Do they? Is it just loading? I don't see the first 25 prime numbers. Huh. Okay. Yeah, so some people... I want to see um, the ones that are like... Fav the most random numbers... These aren't the most random. These are the first 10. I'm missing something. These are... It's the first 10 numbers missing 9. I guess that is kind of random. It's not top 10, though. <laughs> There's 9 of them. Um, okay, someday we'll go really intense and we'll do one of these. This is going to be an intense day when we do one of these streams. So it'll be like a five hour stream when I do this. Okay. Let me see what your comments are saying. Leave a comment of your favorite two digit number and then maybe we'll go to some other types of lists. Do, do, do. Oh, and by the way, make sure you've all checked out the new full episode on the Combo Class main channel came out a day or two ago and you should look forward to the next one that I filmed another 20 minute math one coming out next week um, that one's pretty wild gave a little sneak preview of that of a scene where I get splashed in the face with water to my patreon supporters um, so yeah we got a lot of roasts on some of the letters um, so letters are always very controversial. Someone asked, what is grade negative two? And grade negative two, sort of like the second season or second arc of combo class out of many. And grade negative two will be awesome. And it will be like grade negative one, but even crazier. But it will have a bit of a reset where they'll get a little cleaner at the beginning and then the craziness will continue to ensue. 
and grade negative two will have a lot of tricks up its sleeve, just like grade negative one did. Um, so grade negative two will probably start around April Fool's Day. Maybe a little sooner, we'll see. All right, so um, thank you to all of the um, comments chatting. What I'm gonna do is skip back to my music away from the comments for a minute and look at what those other pages had as far as fun things to put on the rank. Um, one moment. All right, and we are returning. And what do they have for YouTube and streaming? Well, this is all foreign. Roblox YouTubers rating? You think I'll know much about that? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to know. It's going to be really specific. Whoever made any one of these made it about their favorite 10 YouTubers. Um... Let's see who the Roblox YouTubers are, though. Know and watch daily. How many of them do you think I'm going to be able to put in that category, folks? Um, I guess I can do this tier list. I could put them all in never heard of. Um, that'd be a kind of boring list, though. Um, yeah, the YouTube section is not going to be where we can find the correct ranking. What about on the funny section? Okay, we got to save funny for last. That's going to be, it's going to be really unfunny, probably. Um, so, all right, ranking, oh, this will get too political. Um, oh no, stuff like Greek mythology, that might be a good one. Greek mythology. Oh, whoa, lots of, uh, I don't know, all of them. Greek mythology is cool, though. What about medieval weapons? Okay, I don't know what I would be ranking here, which one would win in a fight. Um, I'm not going to do the whole rank, but I feel like these axe-like ones are going to be pretty S-tier in terms of fight. Oh, that one looks pretty wild, too. I don't know. All right. School subjects. Okay, this is good. This will also be controversial. This is... Hmm... I'm wondering if I should do, because there's a few ways you could play this. I could do, like, um, my experience in these classes, or I could do their potential. Um, let's say if you have a really good teacher. No, but if you have a really good teacher, they're kind of all really good. Oh, uh, these are all so good. I'm not going to be able to roast any of these. All right, so what I'm going to just have to do is which ones I had the most fun with. Because if, if I go to their full potential, these are all beautiful things to study. So I'm not going to be able to put any of these in a bad tier in terms of their potential. So let's go with when I was in middle and high school, what I enjoyed. I'm going to put math was a tier because I still had to do a lot of classwork and I was kind of a slacker, even though I loved the subject matter the most. The S tier would have been like art or something where I got to just mess around and stuff more. This is how much fun I personally had in the classes. Uh, I'll put drama at a B tier was pretty fun, but a little, no, that was an A tier. It was kind of fun. I don't know. Music was cool. Um... The art was like the easiest just because maybe I had fun teachers or like it was just fun to like chat with people and like do that for school. I liked English a lot. I liked writing stuff. Um, you know what? I didn't like music class in school that much. I'm saying school subjects. I love making music and playing music. I teach music, but I didn't like the school one as much. Geometry is just has to be less than math. Geometry is part of math. 
So, I'm not saying that's a bad part of math, it's just a subset. Geography, I did not like. Um, memorizing where stuff was. History, this isn't the grade I got in them, to be clear. This is how much I liked them. Um, that is biology, I liked C tier, because there's a lot of memorization. Same with chemistry, a lot of memorization. Same with physics. Uh, I didn't really like learning foreign languages as much. Um, yeah, I didn't like the foreign... I mean, it's cool to know a foreign language. It's an awesome skill. I love being able to... I wish I could communicate better with foreign people, but uh, this is just what how much fun I had in them. History was less. Actually, math probably... I was a year ahead in math, and I did enjoy it. So we'll probably put it up. And I really liked writing. Actually, I don't know. I really liked all these these ones. I really liked those ones. Okay, now we'll sort it by what grade I probably got in them. Uh, I probably got A's in those. These ones I was probably slacking off a little more in. Um, this is my guess of the grades I got in them. I don't know. No, this will sound like bragging. It was mostly A's and it was A's and B's. So I don't know what grades I got in them. Whatever. The, the first list was how much I liked them. Uh, leave a comment with if you love or hate any school subjects. Obviously, you probably like math or maybe the nature science stuff if you like my channel. Or maybe you just like my chaotic personality. Who knows? And, yeah, so, history, they expected to be higher, but, oh, we got a dandelion, oh, okay, stretch this for a second, we got a dandelion in the room, dandelion's been such an all-star of these streams recently, he's been hopping in the window, like, every time I stream in my room and hanging out on the bed. Because he's so cool and good and soft. Yeah, cats are super cool. So people were asking earlier why I like cats. Because this little fluffy boy just hops in my window and hangs out and does his own thing. And if I want to give him pets, then he's extra happy. If I don't, then he just hangs out. And look, he's doing that little thing where he's like kneading, like making little kneading bread, kind of. So... And someone asked if he has a brother. He does. In fact, there are three cats that live here, but one is definitely Dandelion's twin brother, and his name's Sage, and he's the silky one with the same little white bow tie and black fur, but silky. And uh, the other one might be their brother because, long story, I'll tell the whole cat saga sometime, but the one we adopted could be related to them too, so he might have like a half-brother or cousin or something too. But uh, Sage is one silky one that's definitely his brother. And they like to play games and do cool stuff together. They're allies. Someone wants math constants to be rated. And someone also mentioned Lego. So, oh, yeah, that was because we were on the Lego and they said, what is waifus of Lego? Um, all right. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'm curious enough, too, that we have to just see the rabbit hole. They're ranking all of the, I guess, uh, girls in Lego or something. All right. Kind of weird. Um, so just go in there because a comment said it. Now, I don't know enough about Lego. I would just have to be like, which sets look cool. I would be ranking like which set I would want to build. So, yeah, probably not. The ranking probably won't make sense. I don't know, like, know anything about the uh, lore or anything. Um, we'll, so, we'll look up math constants in a minute. Um, what about nature, though? 
Because, like, fruit. So that sounds like something we have to do. So we'll go to math constants in a minute for whoever wants that. But these sound cool. Like, fruit tier list. Solar system objects. Vegetables as a defensive weapon. That's a, that's a good thing to rank, you know? People are putting their hard work into making these lists, you can tell. Bugs. See, these are good. All right. Uh, let's see if any of those have good options. Oh, that's a lot of fruits. Some of them are just tons of fruits. We need a better fruit tier list. I'm going to find the best fruit tier list and really quickly do it. Absolute fruit, 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 fruit. All right. We're going to rank these fruits. Okay. Cherry. S tier. Avocado. A tier. Banana. B tier. Apple. C tier. Blueberry. A tier. Controversial, but ap uh, apricot S tier. Controversial, I know. Blackberry. B tier. Uh, cantaloupe. C tier. Uh, whatever this berry is. Uh, looks like a... I'll put in need to try because I'm not sure what it is. Looks like a... like um, Maybe like a yellower version of a raspberry or something, but I'm not sure. If it's like those yellower raspberries, I'll put those in B tier. Um, coconut. C tier for its interesting uniqueness. Cranberry. Very cool and useful, but on the big scale, D tier. Dates. Same. Very cool and useful, but on the big scale, there's cooler fruits. So these are just ranking in comparison. Remember on these lists, I'm a lover of a lot of things. The things I'm likely to rank are likely things I like. So instead of having all my tier lists have everything in S, we're looking like we're dissing some stuff. Like... I wouldn't call cranberries a D-tier thing, but we're comparing them to their friends. So, figs, C-tier. Dragon fruit, it's pretty good, but it's a little overrated. Um, it's good, but I've had better... It's really interesting, though. But, still. Durian, also D-tier. Interesting, kind of cool, kind of good, kind of smells crazy and weird. Well... Kind of hard to put durian on the same tier as these. Sorry, durian. Compared to the fruits, I'm giving you an F. But it is kind of good. I've had it. It's not that bad. I've had a good one. Tastes kind of custardy, but it does smell really weird. So compared to the fruits, we're putting it there. Um, D for that. Also good. See, I love all these. I hate putting them low. All right. We're bumping everyone up. Um, there we go. Everyone got bumped up a little bit. So, now we're going to put grapes in B tier. We're going to put honeydew in C tier. It's guava, I think, in C tier. Um, no, we need to flood more stuff up. We're, we're putting these in S tier and these up here. All right, so um, I think that's fair. I know apples are good, but there's they're kind of a mid-level fruit. Um, kiwi. We had a weird kiwi earlier today. I still have those weird-shaped ones out in the classroom. Watch my last stream if you want to see a really weirdly shaped kiwi. Um, now these are a little overrated. So these I'm putting in D tier, even though they're really cool. This is the problem with these. These are like the coolest to fil fruits to film. They're really cool looking. But taste-wise, these horned melons aren't as good as the other fruits, even though they're really cool looking. Um, lemon, A tier. Um, lime, B tier. 
uh, lychee A tier, mango S tier. So this mango steen, I need to try it again. I had it like once, but I need to refresh my memory on what it actually tastes like before I give mango steen a ranking. It is called mango steen, even though it doesn't look like a mango. So orange, um, A tier. I'm feeling kind of bad for apple. Apple and grapefruit can go up. Um, peach S tier. Um, I'm putting raspberry S tier and strawberry and watermelon S tier. Okay, this passion fruit, pretty cool and unique, but also I'm putting it D tier just in comparison. I feel really bad for doing it to these tropical fruits, but it's just that the other ones have like a little more punch they're packing. I'll put papaya in B tier. Put pear in probably A tier. Mm, pear will go in B tier. Mm, pear can go in A tier. Um, pineapple, I'm going to put in C tier. Um, plum, I'm going to put in B tier. Starfruit, I'm going to put in... Kind of maybe D tier compared to the others. I know I'm doing hitting that on some of these tropical tart ones, but I'm just doing comparison. These look really cool though. Now I do need to try it again. I'll put it in need to try again. Uh, these are really good, although they're a little more of a chore to eat, but it can be a fun chore. B. Where the, where's the flat type of um, persimmon? A flat persimmon, because that reminds me because a fall fruit like that would go S tier. I don't know where the flat persimmons are at. So that should be up there. Um, so this is my fruit tier list. Nobody got F because fruits are good. I love fruits. Um, so leave your thoughts on which ones you think I radically misranked. I know that lists like this can get controversial quick so um let's see someone's ranking corn for some reason um that's not on here oh no you can't see my screen i'm being so dumb sorry guys that's like the um sorry guys that's the longest i've gone with that error I need to figure out a way to make it so you don't see this infinite thing, but I can keep track of it. Now, this is the first time I'll ever need two monitors for the first time. Now, here was the fruit tier list that I was accidentally hiding from you guys. Let's go through it. Here's the S tiers. Here's the A tiers. Here's the B tiers. Now, there... Some of them are in different ways that they're up there. Like banana and lemon are sort of up there for functionality. Um, so what do you guys think about these ones? Um, so yeah, I scared a bunch of people away by not having the screen on. But thank you for commenting it eventually. Uh, when I eventually looked at the comments, that helps. Um, so <laughs> you guys are like, let's go. He finally realized. <laughs> oh yeah, tomato. Tomato's not on this list for some reason. That's another functionality one. So if you're talking about like pleasure in taking a pure bite out of it, I would rank it higher than some, but I would give a tomato still a C tier or something for pleasure of taking a pure bite out of it. Um, but if you're going functionality, tomato's got to be S tier. It's in so much food. Um... Some people think apples are better than pears. Some people might think pears are better than apples. I think I need to tie them, maybe. Apple and pear should be next to each other, maybe. They're pretty similar. B tier got pretty big, but whatever. Who can go up from B tier? Plums are pretty good. They're pretty close to up there. Um, Yeah, that that's where it's sitting. Actually, yeah, I guess these raspberry thingies are kind of cool. Those can go to A tier. Um... So, yeah, we got um, fans of a variety of ones. 
Um, watermelon, so whoever said watermelon's equal to apple, one thing I want you guys to ponder is that watermelon and apple, I've noticed, when you look really close at them, I'm surprised other people don't do this, ever notice this, is if you look really close, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people do notice, but some people I've mentioned it to, I'm surprised they'd never thought of it this way. You look really close at an apple or watermelon, there are minuscule, like, cell-like formations of juice. They're like these little boundary barrier walls containing juice, like little packets that pop. And when you bite, the crunch is you going through a bunch of those little packets. And so, um, the, uh, what was I thinking? Yeah, the apple and the watermelon are very similar little packets when you crunch them to how they taste. So, um, and there are lots of types of each of these. People are pointing out some variations in types, and it's true that, you know, like a different type of one could be radically different than another. So I'm just going on a relatively typical one of each. Um, there's also, yeah, a lot of debate over what melons of these, like a lot of people think cantaloupe's way better than honeydew. I don't. I was almost tempted to rank honeydew higher. There's something pure and simple and nice about it. There's also these other melons I saw called canary melons that were kind of like that. I'll get one time for the stream. Um, and there's a variety of melons that are similar to both of these. Um, actually, the canary melons might have looked more like that. There was a few colors or a few types of melon with cool names I saw. Um, but these are both cool. They're good melons. And they're berries. And someone's asking, are bananas fruit? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Bananas are fruit. Um, fruits are part of the plant that contains seeds, and bananas have minuscule seeds in them. They are these tiny little ones. Um, if you look in the inside of a banana when you bite it, you, they got some tiny seeds. So, that was our fruit tier list. Like I said, all these opinions are my grade negative one opinions and are subject to change in the future. Gotta leave your opinions open to change. Still fun to rank things for fun. Ranking things is sort of absurd, because I love all things, but then again, I like absurdism. So, um, do, do, do. Gonna go back to a few of my beats in the background and look at, what about vegetables as a defensive mechanism? This is a kind of, just based on the concept of this, well, the tears are in Spanish, but I can understand what they would mean, I think. I'm guessing it means very effective to not effective. Um, so, or maybe these even mean they're bad for you. I don't know. I don't know much Spanish. I know that means very effective, but I'm not sure what that means. Um, so we're just going to rank them in terms of best to worst, in terms of defensive mechanism. Uh, that pumpkin would hurt someone probably, but it's a small pumpkin. Potatoes would do pretty good. I mean, out of this list, you know, these aren't going to be, none of them are very effective. These are going to be closer to the not very good one. This is how good they'll be as a defensive mechanism. What's this? Is this artichoke or nah? If it was artichoke, those are spiky. I don't even know what that is. Um. Yeah, I'm going for one of those if I needed a defensive mechanism. Um, a defensive weapon. Okay, bugs. All right. I'm going to rank these based on how chill it would be if I saw one in the combo class. So the thing with that is normally I like seeing bugs in the combo class. Like bugs in the combo class can be good. There, we'll start with ones that are lower. That's a scary looking spider. I wouldn't want that in there. Now spiders are cool, but you know they're it's less likely I would want these in the combo class. I don't want that. I don't want the mosquito. 
I consciously put worms in the combo class. If another one showed up, that'd be dope. Um, well, let's just go from the start. Butterfly, S tier. Ladybug, S tier. Honeybee, S tier. Fight me. They're good. They're not going to sting you if you don't provoke them. They're chill. They're making pollination. They're doing good stuff. Okay, they sting. A tier. Um, grasshopper. A tier. Um, actually, that type of grasshopper looks pretty dang cool. Ant. C tier. Ants are cool, but you don't want a bunch of ants. What's this? Is like a termite or something, maybe? That looks bad. Fly D tier. Um, this type of fly, less tier. Uh, whatever these weird beetles are, that one looks scary. That one looks kind of okay. Don't want that in the combo. Oh, okay, so since that is on the list, and since that is on the list, uh, these are going to get bumped up to D tier. They're not as bad. Okay. There we go. Now, this little cricket, cricket is B tier. Bumblebee, also A tier. Moth, A tier. Fight me. A moths are good. Moths are underrated. People are scared of moths. They're cool. Caterpillar, S tier. You get to see it turn into something, maybe. Dragonflies, we actually do get those in my garden sometime. I'll call them B tier just because I'm kind of used to them, but they're pretty cool. No, I'll call them A tier. I don't know what this guy is. I'll call him C tier because I'd be intrigued by him. Uh, this thing looks kind of C tier ish. Whatever that spiky beetle thing is. Um, this praying mantis-like thing, I'll, I'll call S tier. I actually raised praying mantises once. It was cool. Um, this leaf bug, I'm calling S tier. That thing's cool. A uh, walking stick. It would be kind of scary to get on your arm, but they're cool, so I'll call them B tier. Um, this blendy in guy is a C tier. This thing does not look good. I don't know what it is, but maybe a tick or something. This thing also might not be good, but it's not necessarily bad. Hard to tell. These little guys too. I'll call them D tier. All right, so I don't know all the details on the bugs. That is my estimate of how excited I would be to see each bug if it entered the combo classroom. Now, oh, I got to charge my phone if I'm going to look at any more chats in a minute. Um, so let's see. We are pro ladybug in combo class. They're a fun, lucky, random thing. And... Um, yeah, carrots poking in the eyes late on the comments, but carrots could have bumped up a tier maybe. Um, worms, we're pro worm in combo class as well. And that's all the insect thoughts I have for now. I need to plug in my phone real quick. All right. So before we go to funny or more nature we can um look at one or two more mathy ones which someone asked for math constants which i don't know if they have that math constants let's see what they put okay um let's see these are a little weird we got let me see the other lists they might have I had some good ones on there. Math tier list. This is just all sorts of weird math stuff. 
Okay, I kind of like this weird one. So this is, nah, this is way too abstract. These are all different things. <laughs> 0.00 Sudoku <laughs> variable. Um, math YouTubers tier list. Okay, math YouTubers tier list. Unfortunately, they don't know about combo class yet. So I don't know about all of these, but what I do know is that S tier, S tier, S tier. Um, then the black pen, red pen guy, I think that's referring to. He's A or B tier. I don't know him super well. Aleph Zero, that was a cool channel. I like that, A tier or something. Seen a, a few of these. I've seen some of the... Oh, Welch Labs was cool. That was up there somewhere. So yeah, they got some math YouTubers, but these are luckily on their list. All-star channels. Um, let's see. Math functions. <laughs> This is funny. Okay, let's graph how cool functions can be real quick. So, just in terms of the graph, like square root's a cool concept, but the square root graph isn't that cool. So, linear is really not that cool for a graph. Logarithm, exponential. These are all on the boringer end for the graph. Absolute value also kind of feels like cheating. Now, here's where I got to put my S tier first. Circle is an S tier equation. Whether you talk about the graph shape or the way you make it, circle is S tier. Combination is got to be S tier. If that just means com combining multiple things of this into one function, that is straight out of combo class. Combination function, heck yeah, S tier. And then all of the trig ones kind of would have to go on A or B tier. I like reciprocal. I think that says some cool things about dividing by zero and about reciprocals of other things showing factor things. Um, then all of these are going to go between A and B tier. I don't want to drag them all up there. Um, so there's math functions. Now, I'm not going to do the whole math constants list, but just to note, because they have, they're a little random and they're choosing, and it's hard to rank when these against each other, they all have their own special purpose and cool thing. It's hard to put many of them below S tier. Um, but, yeah, they got a lot of good ones here. These are all, like, practically S tier things. So... Too good to rank, practically. Maybe in the future I'll try and rank them. So, any other requests before we look at any other random ones? Whenever I look down here, I'm just looking at the chat, but I might as well use it as an excuse to pet my dandelion, too. All right, one sec. Got to hack back into the stream. Okay, so, um, oh, yep, and I love all of you guys who are talking about loving and stuff in the comments, and to whoever says they feel like they are weird, um, uh, weird can be good, hopefully you feel okay, but normally you want, uh, good weird, there can be good weird and bad weird, try to embrace the good weird, um, and someone said math class tier list, which is here. Oh no. Uh, 
All right. And um, sorry to whoever is feeling bad in the comments. Um, I don't really have the time to give any advice, but I do wish you the best. And I love you all. Um, and hope everything works out for all of you. Everything will always have some hard parts, though. Um, I definitely... Definitely had a very hard year myself, so still go through many hard times myself that sometimes I distract myself with stuff like these streams. Um, and then find fun out of that. But I hope you all are doing okay. Um, let's see. Well, these can mean different things. So these are like, there's not like a very strict line mathematically between what Calc 2 and Calc 3 means. Um, branches of math. Is that all? These two branches of math? Um, I'm giving them both S tier because they look like this one is logic and this one is maybe topology or something. And those are both really cool. Um, so... One more look around here. I don't think people realize they get cut off. Is it just cut off fully? You don't get to see the rest of it? I feel like it cuts into the square and they didn't realize. Um, all right. We might just have to do one more of plant or animal type. What's the elements of nature? Okay. This will be one more fun rank before we see if there's anything more to talk about or what's next. So. We're going to rank this sort of surreal list. Water. Oh, it's about how powerful it is? I thought it was about how cool it is. Um... Yeah, it would be better if it's about how cool it is than how powerful it is. You know, maybe we'll switch gears in a minute. And the other game I wanted to play today, apart from making these lists, was to ask that robot more questions because it was pretty funny to see what the robot decided about different numbers and very adamantly claimed and tried to prove. Like, um, the robot, when I asked it, um, tell me something about the number one, give a very lengthy explanation about how one is the sum of the reciprocals of all the positive integers. Um, so let me take a peek at your comments and maybe we'll switch gears over to that in a second. And the next time we come back here, I will have pre-skimmed through to find their cool mathy lists with the best sets of numbers. And sometime when we want to go really intense, we'll rank the first hundred. But that's going to be quite an intense game. All right. Um, and yep, love you all, guys. Um, so... And to people who feel bad in their life sometimes, know that I've been through very, very dark times too. So maybe it will get better for you because now I only sometimes have that, whereas I used to have that always for periods. So um, I still deal with depression, but I've gotten better at making it happen less of the time. Um, so the next thing we we're going to try is asking the robot. A few more number related things but we'll leave a page like this open just in case the robot gives any suggestions because we could also combo it up and merge over where the robot tells us what to graph or the robot tell we figure out the robots tier or something like that There's a lot of combinations possible 
So, um, you guys ready for robot time? So, here's the robot from before. And, um, this time we're going to warm it up a little bit. This time we're going to ask it, um, hey, do you like numbers? Oh, no, it's not working. Hey, do you like numbers? Doesn't have personal preferences or opinions, but it can understand the importance of them. Do I have any questions that it can help with? Yeah. All right. I want to ask it to specify on this more. And we're going to say, how can numbers represent quantities? They can count the objects or size. Three can represent three apples. Three people are three units of other stuff. They're getting it so far. All right, now I wanna hear about these three apples. I wanna hear it do some math about three apples. Okay, so, um, what? mathematical formulas would help you if you had three apples. Counting. We could count them. One, two, three. Addition and subtraction. Oh, they got three plus two is five and three minus one equals two. They're really good when they're in the middle of something. So this is an example, three times two is six. So look, they're really smart when they're like comfortable and rolling along fluidly. They got all this right, but now check this out. Now let's just say, tell me something else about the number three. <coughs> now let's see the properties. So this one's true. This one's true. This one's true. So they're they're act are they getting better on this one? It is the coefficient of x squared in the quadratic formula. The third number in that Pythagorean triple, which is used to find they got a little off in this paragraph. Um, but they were close on three. But how about thirty? Tell me something about the number 30. Now here's some things that they could say. So they could say it's a primorial. It's the first three primes multiplied together. They could say it's a super composite number and list a bunch of its divisors. Um, they could mention a variety of divisibility related things it has or something about its threeveness. 10 times larger than the number three is true. Oh, this is so funny. Last time I was introducing numbers one by one and they would, when I asked about four and then asked about five, they're like, five is the number one larger than four. And then when he asked about six, it's like six is the number one larger than five because they describe it based on things they think you already know. And so this time they already knew three. So when I told them 30, they said, Oh, it's 10 times larger than three to try and explain it to me. All right, a composite number. In this case, it's divisible by the prime numbers two, three, five, and 10. Uh, not quite prime there. It's the product of the first two prime. Oh, they were so close to the primordial thing. 30 is the product of the first three prime numbers, two, three, and five. Um, so this one's really off. Um, semi-perfect the sum of all of its proper divide this doesn't mean that that would mean normal perfect that it's equal to the sum of all of them 
Semi-perfect means that just some of them subs, uh, subset add to them. Right here, they just prove that all of them add to more than it, making it what we call an abundant number, actually. Uh, both the Fibonacci and Lucas sequence. No, not true. Um, 30 is a significant milestone and threshold. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, now we can see how much they get like all these wrongs full of errors. If you ask them about a specific number, they have to be like in the mood, like rolling through something to get all their math. Right. Um, so let's see, I'm going to ask one or two more questions and then you guys can leave any suggestions if you have any requests or anything. Um, what else would be curious to see its opinion mathematically? And it's not going to give an opinion, but it's going to, you can like trick it into giving what it thinks is the cultural opinion. Um, so well, maybe let's just see this. Let's ask it to explain one of the things right here. You said 30 is the product of the first two prime numbers, two and three. Can you prove that? <laughs> yes, it is true. To prove it, we can use the concept of prime numbers and factorization. A prime number is a positive integer greater than one that's divisible by only one in itself. Yep, this is true so far. To find the product of two numbers, we can multiply them together. For example, the product of two and three is six, which we can verify by using the formula two times three equals six. Therefore, we can conclude that 30 is the product of the first two prime numbers, two and three. We can also, I'm not sure if I'm blocking any of this part. I'll put it over here in case. We can also prove this by writing out the prime factorization of 30 which is the expression of a number as the product of its prime factors. The prime factorization of 30 is two times three times five, which shows that 30 can be written as the product of the prime numbers two, three, and five. Since two and three are the first two prime numbers, this further supports the conclusion that 30 is the product of the first two prime numbers. Oh, uh, they were so close. They could have just made that two, three. That would have been good. Um, all right. Then let's ask, what is the product? Okay, wait, wait. If 30 is the product of the first two prime numbers, what's the product of the first three prime numbers? Uh, they came back to 30 again. This time they got it right. Yeah, we know this. Okay. So let me see if you guys have any other requests or thoughts while I eat these extra large blueberries. Like I said, they're making the blueberries larger these days, and I fully support it. Um, people want to know about various stuff. Um, did I block it more? Oh, am I on that side now? Yeah, I'm really bad at structuring this. I'm on that side now. I'll just shrink myself. So, all right, now it'll be less blocked. And now we're going to ask it about I. That's a good one. Um, and so, let's see. Um... What are some cool traits of the number I? Can you guys see all that? Yeah. Cool. A square root of negative one, true. It used to represent rotations in complex plane. Basically true in an overly simplified way, yep. Cool. Let's ask it about the roots of unity that I was talking about in the other day's episode. What are the 
cube roots of the number one. Uh-oh, the cube roots, these are the fourth roots they're spitting out. Uh-oh. Three cube roots, these equal one, negative one, and I. And they also, um, yeah. This is very <coughs> not, it's not the fourth roots because they're missing negative I. They just think that. So the first root of one is one. The second root is one and negative one. They think the third root's just one, negative one, and I. That's not true. These numbers cubed are not one. <laughs> um, one squared equals one. Negative one squared equals negative one. They prove that. I cubed equals negative one. They prove that. They're negative. What? Therefore, the cube roots of the number one are one, negative one, and I. It's worth noting that the number one has other cube roots that are complex numbers. Uh, for example, the complex number negative I is also a cube root of one. Okay, they do throw a negative I in the mix. Since negative I cubed equals negative one. <laughs> However, these cube roots are not considered to be the principal cube roots of one as they are not real numbers and do not have a real part. The principal cube roots are these, including one that also doesn't have a real number or a real part. Okay, they are completely butchering this one. The principal cube root is, is a thing, but the principal cube root is just one um, out of these. And the other cube roots are none of these. <laughs> they are just throwing imaginary numbers at the wall and hoping that some stick. Um, all right, let's see another thing. Um, let's ask it. Um, well... Yeah, I want to make it go deeper on some of the things that it gets wrong to try and figure this out. So, since the cube roots of the number 1 are 1, negative 1, and i, does i cubed equal 1? Yes, that is correct. Therefore, we can say that i cubed equals 1. They say it there. Which means if you cube, we get negative 1. However, if we... Whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is really weird. So, first they say i is defined as the square root of negative 1, which means that when we cube the number i we get the result negative one. They said it was the square root. So already we're weird, okay? And then, then they say we're supposed to raise that result to the power of three. However, when we raise negative one to the power of three, we get one. That's also not true. So like literally every step of this is wrong. So it's like, why would that mean we cube it? No, we don't get um, negative one. Why are we using negative one there? No, it doesn't equal one. <laughs> and then therefore they put it all together. I has both a real part and an imaginary part. The real part is zero while the imaginary part is one. When we cube the number i, we are essentially multiplying the imaginary part of i by itself three times. Du, 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 du. Since the imaginary part of i is one and any number multiplied by itself three times is itself cubed. This is why we get the result i cubed equals one when we cube the number i. That is wildly off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. How many complex cube roots does a number have? 
infinite. They're close on some of these formulas, but numbers don't have infinite cube roots. There are infinite number of complex cube roots that some number, counting all the numbers, could have in total, but there's not a number with infinite cube roots. Um, all right. Um, what are some of the infinite cube roots of the number eight? All right, they're throwing out some random ones at the wall. Um, hoping these ones stick. They're not quite right on this again. Um, let's see how the comments are looking. All right, and whoever's like the fourth root of one could be I. Well, check out my newest main channel episode, because that is just about that. Um, there's uh, a lot of stuff that in my newest main channel episode may help people who don't understand imaginary numbers get a cooler grasp of why they do things and why they're around. Someone said to ask about surreal numbers, but I still need to explain those to the class myself and study them a bit more myself. They're pretty interesting. Um, so let's ask it just a few more ones before we may wrap up in a little bit. And what about square roots? Do numbers have an infinite amount of square roots? All right, they're not, we're not gonna be able to trick them with four maybe. Hmm. So let's just ask it for one more combo. What is a cool trigonometric function to graph to get a interesting shape? Which is an uninteresting shape. Here's a few examples. Uh, these are too simple. Oh, and they're just listing the basic ones. Yeah, no, we need a crazy one. Can you tell me a crazy combination of those? Can you tell me a crazy, wait, here's a combination. Okay, cool, they made a crazy combination. Oh, whoa, whoa, they even describe it. Let's see if this works, okay. All right, let's try it. So. Y equals sine X plus cosine X plus tan X plus cosecant X. Okay. 
Did they say it? What did they say it's going to have? A curve with a series of spikes and cusps that oscillate between the values of negative 2 and 2 as the input value x increases. Um, what was it? Sine of x plus cosine of x plus tan of x plus cosecant of x. Okay, the computer found a kind of cool one. All right, let's say that was pretty cool. Do you have another with an even crazier shape? Okay, they said just to square each of these. The curve has... Oh, they say the same description of it. But, okay, it still might make it crazy. We're going to follow their advice. Okay, it's already crazy. Whoa. Okay, yeah, see, the computer stumbled into the type that we were looking at the other day, too, because they're simple enough just to stumble into. Yeah, that's interesting. For anyone who's celebrating Christmas tomorrow, which I'm not really, I'm a little more Jewish, but not doing that much this year anyway. But um, to anyone celebrating Christmas tomorrow, Merry Christmas, here is a cross. So um, that's a good one. I think it's cool that, do we need that at the end? Uh, it got bumpy just with one of them. Did it need the cosecant or? This one was kind of cool. Like, look, it already has these interesting waves. And let's see how many. It's like none, two, like four-ish, seven-ish. Do you know? So that's kind of cool. We haven't looked at this one yet. Well, I like this one to get denser. This one's cool. What happens if we switch which one gets the squared? That also does craziness. And what about this? Okay, that one might is really crazy. So do we need both of these in here even? Yeah, see, that's a good simple one. Sine of x squared plus tan of x. It's a good little wild one. What about tan of 1 over x? Whoa, that one's trippy. This is trippy. All right. So that's fun to fiddle around with. I do think I'm going to wrap up the stream pretty soon. We can get a little more celebration with Dandelion and a little last check on the comments. Uh, I do have lots more fun content coming for you guys on this bonus channel. Uh, I got another short uh, to put out tomorrow and a couple of shorts actually for the next few days. And we may do some Christmas live streams because I don't know what I'll be doing. Might be around a little bit. And although I'm not scheduling anything right now, stay tuned because sometimes I schedule them a few hours in advance. And sometimes I mention them on the Discord. And I'm sure we'll be back soon. But in any case, let's get one last little celebratory dandelion pet. Thank you to everyone who joined me today for our little live
combination of tier lists, graphs and robots, and nice soft cats. You're all super awesome. Make sure to watch that newest main channel episode. Make sure to check out the cool links in the description, like the Discord and the Patreon and stuff. And I will catch you guys again soon. Hope you all have a wonderful day, and hope everyone who is having hard stuff in their life that it doesn't last too long and that you find some cool stuff too.